All right, it's Friday. We are time. It's we are time. It's we are time. time. We're ready to it's deploy. Time. It's Friday. You can tell it's Friday. <laughs> That's right. We are ready to deploy. Uh, welcome to Deploy on Friday, episode thirty-four. I'm John, joined by Jim. Uh, if you've never seen this show before, uh, this is a show where we take a look at the latest tech trends and news relative to Octopus Deploy and discuss it uh, as two, I guess, ignorant people do. Uh, you know, so. We're just two guys Under checking out the tech. Held. So, Isn't that what they say? That's right. No, sure, wait, why not? So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> How was your week, by the way, Jim? Yeah, good, good. I'm uh, I'm off on leave next week, so uh, rush oh, through, get nice. everything done, and out the door to some sunshine. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, it's getting hotter here, so uh, the weather in Australia is starting to get a little bit uh, summery, as they say. And uh, mm-hmm. I'm just waiting for everything to catch on fire, basically, because that's what happens here in Australia. Although, so, anyways, I did get a, I did get an email in my inbox this morning for pumpkin spice latte, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. <laughs> uh, it's probably someone, <laughs> someone, some mailing list in America. There you go. Uh, yeah. All right, so uh, just to let you know, uh, shipped is now listed on the homepage. So uh, big, big news. So we've got that listed now. In case you haven't heard of shipped, this is our. One day, uh, all-you-can-eat buffet of virtual all-you-can-eat goodness. Uh, this is November 15th, 2023, and we've got quite a big lineup. Um, you can register now, and we've just published the schedule today. Uh, so we got our speakers, and let's take a look at the schedule. So we've got Paul delivering his keynote address. And then after that, we've got Colin giving an update on product. Uh, some of these abstracts may change a little bit, but... Um, we've got a secret session that is yet to be announced. Then we've got Michael talking about release pipelines with GitHub Actions and Octopus Deploy. Then we have Nick and Robert talking about GitOps. Uh, sorry, Kit, not Nick. Nick, Kit, uh, or uh, Nikita. Uh, overcoming the challenges with Kubernetes deployments for enterprise customers. And then Paul Grady is going to talk to us about performance. So Paul's been doing a lot of work around performance, and he's going to be talking about tracking, reporting, and preventing performance regressions with Octopus Deploy. Ian's going to talk to us about what's new in tenanted deployments. Uh, Steve will talk about insights, so Dora and all the goodness there. And then wrapping things up will be Bob talking about multi-tenancy architecture lessons learned. So... That is the event lineup. We've got a couple of things to add to it, but generally speaking, um, this is the event schedule. So Shipped is the website, octopus.com slash Shipped. Uh, check it out. Register today. Let us know um, if you're going to attend on social, etc. cetera. But uh, the full schedule is now available, so go ahead and check it out. Looks awesome. Do we actually not know? Do, is they actually secret sessions, or do we just not know what we're doing yet? Uh, we've got a session lined up, but we need some things to line up first. Uh, so yeah, uh, I, it's something I can't really tell out of school, but I would ruin the surprise. So, uh, okay. best right. to wait for it. So, um, yeah, we're going to try and line some things up and we're also trying to do some other things as well around the ship. We've got, uh, potentially another speaker joining us. So we'll see. So there you go. Uh, latest news on the blog. We got Steve writing another article on practical routes for healthy culture. This is actually a carryover of the State of DevOps report that was recently published. So last week, we talked about this on the show. The State of DevOps report is an annual report written since 2014 by the DevOps group, um, sorry, the Dora group. Um, and uh, the uh, the report itself actually had a lot of uh, tips and tricks on promoting culture. They talked about how to reduce burnout. They talked about uh, employee satisfaction, et cetera. So lots and lots of stuff there. And so Steve talks about some of the things that uh, were observed in the report and some of the things that you can see in terms of uh, implementing within your organization to improve its performance. And so some of the things that uh, were found, um, so the high performance organizations were those with more customers, obviously, higher profits and a larger relative share of the market. Um, And this is what they describe as the high performance organizations. And so to get to that, um, you need to instill some changes within your organization. So Steve goes through some of the changes that are important for you to instill within your organization and some of the things that, you know, would help. Um, so there, it depends on the audience you're talking to as well. So cultural change for technical contributors, cultural change for technical management. Um, culture itself um, has numerous benefits, and all these are highlighted in the report. The report itself is actually quite detailed. It's a, it's a long report. You can download it right now from the Dora website or from the Google Cloud website. 
and um, they interviewed over sixty or sorry thirty six thousand people. And uh, there's some really, really good insights about that. And if you want to learn more about it, you can watch the video that I recorded. Uh, I interviewed Michelle Irvin, and uh, we, she and I talked a little bit about the report. We went through all the highlights, etc. She was one of its authors. And uh, so if you want the Cliff Notes version or the video version of what that looks like, you can go check out our version, our video there. Excuse me. It's up on our YouTube page. And speaking of the YouTube page, we've got a bunch of other uh, videos that are there. Uh, we published recently the Octopus 101 webinar that we did. Uh, the community town hall. We also have other webinars coming up this month. So uh, later on, uh, actually, uh, very, very soon, we're going to have Matthew Casper talking about Kubernetes. We've got to update this because obviously this one's already occurred. Uh, we had our partner webinar with Aptum uh, recently. Uh, Matthew is going to be doing a talk uh, next week around Kubernetes. Uh, and uh, Matt's done a lot of work with Kubernetes, which is great. We've got a talk with Adam and Steve talking about platform engineering, the new hot topic. I'll be doing my 101 session in November. And then at the end of the month, which isn't listed, we'll also have our community town hall, which we do monthly as well. So lots and lots of stuff. That's at octopus.com slash webinars. So in case you weren't uh, satisfied with all the stuff that's coming around shipped and stuff, we have a lot of stuff, other surrounding stuff that we do on a weekly basis, uh, almost like twice a week now. So it's crazy how much content we're producing. Anyways, on to some of the other news related to Octopus. We have a lot of customers who use .NET. And .NET 8, uh, Release Candidate 2, shipped earlier this week. And so by now, hopefully you've gotten the bits. You can install these side by side. Um, We're getting very, very close to the release of this thing. Um, and it turns out that it will be released as part of .NET Comp. So stay to the date, uh, listed here up at the banner. So November 14th to 16th will be .NET Comp. We will be there, uh, virtually spe speaking, of course. Um, but .NET 8, Release Candidate 2 is now available. Lots of changes, etc. Um, they're putting the, the finishing touches on a lot of this stuff, and um, nothing major. To, nothing major to announce in release kind of two, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, just getting closer and closer to the eventuality of having um, the final version available to us. And now we'll have an upgrade nightmare for everyone on their hands. So there you go. I'm excited. .NET eight supposed to. You know, it's going to give us a lot of wins, especially around performance. Um, Stephen Taub's article, which we cited in, in uh, I think, two shows ago, um, his article on .NET 8 performance, what we did, etc., uh, really kind of speaks to that. So uh, it'll be really interesting to see how people see the bits in the wild and how they run, etc. So in .NET 8, release candidate 2, um, new NuGet package readme's. Simple CLI-based project evaluation for MS Bill, publishing containers to uh, zip archives, and then tensor primitives for .NET. I'm not sure what tensor primitives are for .NET. I'm assuming this is for the tensor. Um, tensor is the tensor I, AI and ML stuff. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So there you go. Anyways, yeah, cool. interesting. Yeah. This yeah. was an article I picked up recently, uh, DevRel insights from 650,000 developers. So this is up on DevRel or devrelations.com. And this is a site that talks about developer relations and does a lot of meta analysis around communities. And this was an interview that was recently done, a presentation delivered uh, by Jonathan Gottfried. Uh, he, um, he's one of the uh, co-founders of Major League Hacking. And uh, they spend a lot of time talking to developers, obviously. And so if you want to see some insights around what developers care about and what they what they think, um, you can watch this. And there's a transcript available as well, if you so wish. So um, getting into the hearts and minds into developers is a very hard thing. Uh, you have to know what you're talking about. People can see through the BS, so to speak, if you're a developer. So you can't you can't sugarcoat them with pleasantries. You got to speak truthfully and technically, et cetera. And developers care about very specific things. And so uh, this is a good insight as to what they care about. Interesting. Yeah. God not, a lot of, not a lot of tolerance there for them. waffle, is there? No, no, definitely not. Waffling <laughs> is it def waffling. The pitchforks and torches will come out as soon as you start to waffle. Uh, I've been on stage and uh, you can see the angry, the anger level peak up when, <laughs> uh, whenever you try and, you know, parade around some opinion that maybe you don't well know. Um, <laughs> so it's best to be, it's best to say, I don't know, or uh, uh, listen, this is really interesting, but I'm not the expert here. So let's invite yeah, so-and-so yeah. on the stage to tell us about <laughs> this uh, instead. So yeah, uh, definitely having an insight there helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Palumily, eh, Palumily, 
Pulumi. Pul- uh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. recently introduced Escape or ESC, uh, easy and secure environments, secrets, and configuration. So everyone's getting into the vault business now. Um, it seems like so. Uh, it's a new product from Pulumi. Uh, looks to manage um, uh, basically uh, credentials, etc., secrets, and whatnot across your cloud infrastructure and application environments. So I'm assuming it's Escape. I haven't really confirmed whether or not if it's ESC or if it's Escape, but the fact that it's ESC and it matches the keyboard character, um, kind of. so I, I assume Escape is what they're going to call it. So they have a CLI, uh, ESC. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, hopefully it doesn't conflict or clash with any other CLIs. I don't think it does. I've never seen a CLI named ESC. No. But... Um, yeah, it allows you to interact, obviously, with the product, uh, get access to creds, etc. Very similar to the Vault uh, from uh, the Vault uh, CLI or the One Password CLI or any other CLIs that you use for a trusted environment for accessing creds and secrets and all that stuff. And so they talk about you know how this works and your sources and the ESC is in the middle and then you have your targets available. So if you're using this as part of a deployment, uh, you could easily shell out to the CLI. You'd obviously have to make it part of the worker environment. Uh, but this can be done. And then once available, you could access those environments. I would assume at some point, if someone wanted to, they could target the library, which is at library.com and write a custom step template for it. So um, yeah, uh, if you're at all interested, uh, check it out. The blog post is now available up on the Plumy blog. And uh, if you're also at all interested, maybe someone could write a step template for it. So who knows? So there you go. So yeah, ESC. Yeah. Another awesome. yet another product, yeah. Is Polymia open source? Yeah, these vault no, uh, parts of it, that. yes. Yeah, yeah, most of it is actually. Sorry, my apologies. So if you go to uh, Polumi uh, on GitHub, they've got a lot of their. I think it's entire. If I'm not mistaken, it's entirely Apache open source. 2. If I remember correctly. Well, so, yeah, there's true ESC. Open source uses Apache two. Yeah. Mm. There you go. So there's uh, ESC right there. And it's, oh, written in Go. That's awesome. They used, uh, let me t- actually, just as a side note, let me just go over to their uh, mod file. I'm going to take a look at what libraries they're using. So uh, that's interesting. They're using Cobra. We use Cobra for our CLI. And uh, this is based on Go. So Cobra, if you, uh, this is getting off on a tangent here, but if mm-hmm. you're at all interested, Cobra is a uh, library in Go for building interfaces. And it's awesome. And we used it for the Octopus CLI. Um, so if you go to slash CLI, uh, that's the other one. Yeah, this one. So this is our uh, new, new CLI. Uh, it's not so new anymore. It's been out for a while. But we use Cobra for our CLI. And it looks like they did as well, which is awesome. I'm just taking a look at what else they used. Uh, let's see here. That's roughly about it, actually. Most of the libraries that are warrant discussion. All the other stuff is kind of like building blocks. Obviously, they have an SDK for interacting with yeah. their API. They have process HCL, Go Query String, another popular library. So there you go. Oh, Glamour from Charm Bracelet. Charm Bracelet. So Charm uh, is a uh, set of libraries as well uh, that are great for building CLIs. So Charm.sh is the website, and they have a number of libraries in here. So they have like Lip Gloss and Glamour and Wish and Bubble Tea. And Glamour is the ability to style your your um, CLI output as CSS. So it's kind of like style sheet based for Markdown and yeah, such. Yeah. So if you want to style your your uh, CLI output, they make a number of wicked wicked libraries. So Charm.sh is the li- is the website. Uh, and it looks like they're using that for a variety of things. Recently, I saw an update. Actually, there's something I didn't include in the list of uh, what's new, but I think Bubble Tea has the ability of rendering out perfect tables now. So Bubble Tea is the ability to uh, create these sort of stateful terminal apps, etc. Terminal is the TUI, terminal UI is the uh, the new hotness I find, and a lot of people are using Charm for that sort of stuff, so that's cool to see that they're using Charm. So great, that's the new CLI for Pulumi uh, for accessing... Uh, well, that's the CLI actually for their product. So, environments, secrets, and configuration, or Pulumi Escape. I, I'm assuming they're going to call it Escape. I don't know. So there you go. <laughs> we'll call it Escape. <laughs> escape to the world of Pulumi. Take you back. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, eBPF. This is uh, something that has been around for a bit. Uh, this was introduced way back when as part of Linux. Um, and so, eBPF, it's the. Um, it's basically the uh, ability to run 
uh, in a secure context. And um, this is the Berkeley packet filter. This is an extensibility mechanism within the Linux kernel. And um, it's, it allows you to do a lot of really cool things, especially in the context of containers. And so this is a new product from Grafana. I like Grafana a lot, called Bela. And this is their open source EBPF auto instrumentation for active eh, <laughs> application observability. It's one of those days, I'm sorry. So, um, so application observability, this is basically very important to Grafana because they spend a lot of time talking about accessibility. And so this is a product that allows you to integrate with that as part of their eBPF um, integration. So they talk a little bit about eBPF here and how this works. And so this works at the kernel level. So it's very low, right. very low latency, high availability at the kernel level for observing Linux applications, which obviously if you're running containers, et cetera, allows you to get that instant, almost near instant access for um, tracing. And so um, that's what it allows you to do. And you can set this up with their um, package for uh, Grafana, so Grafana Bela. And then once you have that installed, which is their library here in Go, um, you can then instrument it and then get access to the data that's coming through. So it, it it's really like, um, it's like a subsystem for Linux that gives you really low latency, high availability for, you know, observability of applications running in concert. So... Awesome stuff. And then once you have the day, you can obviously send it wherever you want. And in this case, probably Grafana. <laughs> so yeah, probably be Grafana, right yeah. place to put it, I think. <laughs> yeah, you, you throw it right at Grafana to render out. So as an example. So yeah. So there you go. EBPF now available, uh, sorry, through uh, Grafana Bela. So this is their open source uh, library for doing that. So do you want to try with Grafana for application observability, <laughs> but you don't have time to adapt your application for it? That's okay. You can use EBPF and you can access it through this and then render it out. So there you go. Easy. Awesome stuff. Oh, and they're also having a conference. I didn't see this. A concert. A conference. God, what is what, what is with me today? Uh, <laughs> Observability Con in London. God, I'll have to uh, I'll have to read more about this. I didn't see this. Grafana Observability Con 2023 kicks off in London. There you go. What is with November? .NET Conf, Observability Conf. Um, you got shipped on the 15th. Like... Did everyone pick the same day at the same time? <laughs> Seems like it. It was our date, man. I don't, I don't get it. That was our day. Oh, whatever. All right. Anyways, that's uh, wrapping up the latest news for this edition of Deploy on Friday. Uh, Jim, any? I'm, I'm still waiting for updates, man. Are there any updates coming from, uh, we'll, from you and your we'll team? Be a little while. We'll be a little while. We, I mean, right. our team's produced uh, a bunch of the new stuff we've released around network resiliency. Um Oh, okay. And, uh, nice. Some new some new AIPs around um, a new version of our tentacle client that um, can improve throughput as well, operating at really high scale. So yeah. I think we touched on those already. Yeah, that's what my team's been. Yeah, doing. anything. Yeah. Anything. Uh, anything new on? The, I was gonna. I was meant to share the roadmap, but I didn't earlier. But I'll just quickly bring it up again. If you're curious at all about what we're building, uh, go to roadmap.octopus.com. This is this should be your homepage, if not a bookmark. You'll get a list of what we released. So things like we, you know, linked to the failed steps, uh, enhanced the script editor experience, uh, improved ten. This is what you guys worked on, eh? Improved yeah, technical resiliency them, yeah. for unreliable network. Yeah, nice. Okay, so there you go. There's there's uh, Jim's contribution. So, uh, and then if you want to see what we're thinking or what we're planning on doing, um, this is a list of some of the things that we're doing. So some of these things we already have some EAPs on. Some of these I've already seen working demos of. So our OIDC integration, I've already seen demos of, which looks pretty cool. And some other things we actually don't have finished yet. And then we have our sort of under config, under consideration. This is like, you know, uh, the the uh, the working list of good ideas, I guess. So there you go. Yeah. So roadmap.octopus.com. Sorry for the little side tangent there. So anyways, awesome. Anyways, if you happen to stumble upon this show and you seem to um, like it, feel free to like and subscribe. Otherwise, if you want us to discuss something on this uh, show, send us a comment. Let us know about anything that is on your radar. And until next time, we'll see you on the next edition of the Play